Schumacher in the Silver Arrow, can he manage the comeback? In the interview, Willi Weber, Formula One manager. Mr. Weber, we're going into the 61st Formula One season with 19 races coming up. That's more than ever before. And Michael Schumacher is back after three years away from the sport. You've been his manager for more than 20 years now. Is this season special, even for you as something of a veteran? That's fair to say, yes. It certainly is a special season. Special because I'd already parted company with Formula One, and so had he. I was looking for something else from life, and yet now everything's changed again. In fact, I'm looking forward to it, because somehow it takes me back to the very beginning. We're starting again, and we'll see what happens. How will we get on? Are our old friends still around? Is this the Formula One we left behind? It's going to be interesting. Michael brings seven championship titles and his wealth of experience to the new team. But we know he's a perfectionist, and he's being quite guarded in his public statements about the car. Are expectations too high ahead of the season? I don't think so. You have to have expectations to aim for. We have a bit of time left before the first race. We're working on aerodynamic packs and making some improvements. And then we'll aim to compete right up front. It's incredibly close, as we saw on the last practice day. The gap between the different teams isn't as big as it used to be. But Michel's goal is to win races, establish himself in the team, get the key people he needs behind him, and then ultimately aim for the title. That's definitely the case. You say get people behind him. He certainly has his fans behind him. And he has a new teammate, Nico Rosberg. He's much younger. How will that relationship turn out? We'll see after the first race how much of a gap there is between them. That's how it's always been in motorsports. The whole team orientates itself around the faster driver. He won't get any better equipment, everyone gets the same. But it will be the case that the strength of the team goes to the faster one. And you feel that as a driver. Formula One has just gone through a huge change. Old teams and engine suppliers have pulled out, and new ones have come along. Lotus, Virgin, and Campus, if they can get a car together. What do you make of these new teams? Can they compete, or will we see a two-speed season? Well, first of all, I think it's great that these garagisti, as I call them, are coming back because they'll bring life back into Formula One. The manufacturers brought a monotone quality to the sport. When they pour millions into Formula One, they only have one goal, winning the championship. They have to come first to get marketing behind them. You feel the pressure from top to bottom, including even the spectators, and not to mention the drivers themselves. But that should now improve. The more garagisti come along, the more of a friendly atmosphere we'll get back in Formula One. That single-mindedness will go. Of course, everyone is driven to win, but it won't be as extreme as when there's a manufacturer standing there with so much money on the line that it has to answer for. It'll be more enjoyable? It will be, yes. Another thing has changed in Formula One. Ten of the 19 races will be outside Europe, with more in the Asia-Pacific region. Is that the right direction for Formula One to go? Formula One has to move in that direction. The conditions here in Europe are becoming more and more restrictive, so much so that sponsors may think twice about being involved. 
That's the reason for the move to Asia, where they're a bit more relaxed and don't wag their fingers and say, you're using too much fuel and so on. Ultimately, for Bernie Ecclestone, it's all about viewing figures. You can follow Formula One all over the world, and I think that's what matters to him. Something else that could make the race more interesting, or perhaps not, are the new regulations. They get changed from season to season, but this time there is one decisive change. Fuel tanks are being enlarged from 90 to 150 liters. That means there won't be a fueling stop anymore. Won't that rob Formula One of a strategic element? No, it won't, because we still have to change tires. I doubt any team will be able to avoid that, so no one will be able to avoid stopping. I think it's a good thing, because there was always a risk with refueling. We've often seen what can happen. Why include that if it's not necessary? In GP2, they start fully tanked, and it sees them through. They still have to change tires once or twice. So I don't think we'll lose that strategic effect. Along with Michael Schumacher, you also have Nico Hildenberg under your wing, a very young driver. What do you expect from his first Formula One season at Williams? I know what Nico is capable of. He's won everything I entered him for. Now, he's not going to win the Formula One title straight away. He and Williams certainly have that ultimate goal, but he has to find his way, get into the routine, find his place in Formula One hierarchy, learn how to deal with the press, and to handle the pressure. I will certainly let him do that, and I hope others around him will too. Then I'm sure he'll be great. You've also watched Michael Schumacher mature, and you once said there's no room for mistakes in Formula One. Was it a mistake for Michael to return to the sport? No way. Michael was born to be a race car driver. That's what he does best, and it's what he likes most. Maybe he's realized that in the past three years. Racing makes him happy, so I'm very pleased for him. It's great. He's chosen the best team where he has a good chance of winning. That's right for him, and was the right choice. He doesn't have to prove anything. He's the seven-time world champion, and in my view, still the best racing driver in the world, and he'll prove that once again. Believe me, I think he's in top shape. There's no need to worry about his physical fitness. And we know he's fond of understatement. Instead of saying, the car is good, he always says, we still have lots of work to do. Can he become world champion again? That much is certain. He's with the best team. He's with the reigning world champions. They won the title last year, so they know how it's done. Now they've got a driver who also knows how it's done. He's won 91 races and seven world championship titles, so if that's not a good combination, I don't know what is. Mr. Weber, thank you for joining us and enjoy the season.